Eric, when you put on your uh, the the hat that you once upon a time put on all, all the way back in like 2012, 2013, when you looked at and daydreamed about the future of crypto, I would imagine some shape of Thorchain was like kind of in that that daydream way back when. How, how do you uh, how do you like think that Thorchain will impact or change the crypto landscape like moving forward? Like, what do you think about uh, when you look at Thorchain's role for shaping the future of crypto? Yeah, so it's important for the ecosystem for one very simple reason, which is that the largest digital asset in the world can now be traded without any intermediaries for the first time. Mm. It's horribly embarrassing that 12, 13 years into the Bitcoin project, 100% of the spot trading of that asset was going through centralized intermediaries, right? There, of course, there's a little bit of trading that happens peer to peer at, at Starbucks, but not, not at any material number. Um, and so we had this incredible, beautiful, decentralized monetary base and all of the trading of it is happening on centralized exchanges. Uh, <laughs> that was a big problem. And um, I think a lot of the Bitcoiners just accepted that, you know, like many of them haven't been willing to experiment with other chains and other tokens because they are wedded to the idea that other chains and other tokens are always worthless. And um we see in the Ethereum world all this experimentation with, with DeFi, with smart contracts, and Uniswap and Bancor. Like when they created that model of the AMM, that was a, an incredible breakthrough. So that now you could trade assets without any intermediary in this frictionless way, and users with spare capital can earn fees on that. That was an incredible innovation, and yet it didn't support Bitcoin. And this was like so tragic. So Thorchain now has existed and has been live for two and a half, three years. Um, it's amazing how few people still know about it, uh, especially people that want to go in and out of Bitcoin, right? Like the, the two major assets, if you want to trade them without an intermediary, there's one place to do it. Um, so that's why that's why this is so cool and so important. And it's, ever since I saw it, I, I fell in love with it, you know, both as it was an echo of what Shapeshift was doing back in the day, but just like as a critical piece of infrastructure for this entire space. Mm -hmm. Chad, is there a notion of apps on Thorchain? Is there like an application layer to Thorchain or is it more narrow in that it just wants to do this one job, which is cross-chain asset swaps and do it extremely well? Uh, yes, it's much more narrow. So there, there's no smart contracting on top of Thorchain itself. There's no Cosm Wasm yeah. or Solidity or something of the nut, something of the such. Uh, it does. It has expanded to other kind of concepts over, over time. So we started with the AMM, which is really great. We moved to something called synthetics for highly efficient. Um, it gives like a 15x capital efficiency, which is great. We moved to what we call savers, which is like a single asset yield, right? That you would get uh, uh, deposit a single asset and get yield on that asset without IL risk or any of these kind of things. We also moved to our, our lending design, where our lending design is: um, is can you deploy uh, Bitcoin as collateral, or you can do Ethereum as collateral, and actually get you know, a loan out, right? And this loan is 0% interest, no liquidations whatsoever, and no expiry, which is a tr truly transformative or novel concept uh, of how you can actually structure a loan. It's very uh, different than done here. So we've expanded to all, all sorts of other DeFi kind of focused uh, uh, concepts to, ex to say that we can build DeFi in a way that is chain agnostic, that is asset agnostic. We can build DeFi in a way we can give the same access that Ethereum people have had for years now around the power, the flexibility you can do with Ethereum and the other assets on that chain. Now you can do that same kind of stuff with assets that are have long time been isolated, like Doge, like Bitcoin, like like Litecoin, like whatever else. And so to do that, to, to, to apply DeFi to the entire crypto space, not just to specific EVMs, is a quite important and transformational technology for the industry. If you enjoyed all of that, then you'll absolutely love the Bankless newsletter. Join over 300,000 fellow readers, all for free. Click below to sign up.